area. Hello YouTube, I'm James Scott here with my uncle Jeff and this week is opening week. Uh, today we will be going through the AL East, uh, giving a quick wrap up before I have to go and watch the Met game of the way I think each team is going to be this year. So, what what about the what what do you think is going to go on with the Yankees? Uh, Yankees right now are a monster. They they have, they're probably the most loaded deep team in the major leagues. They have pitching, they have hitting, uh, they have a couple of key minor leaguers coming up through the system. Uh, David Phelps pitched in our bullpen a few nights ago, and, and he should be throwing about 95, 96. He doesn't have a true strikeout pitch, but uh, like many of the guys in the system, he should contribute positively over the next year. I'm fully expecting them to finish first place. Who do you think they're going to draft? Uh, well, in the, in the upcoming draft? Yeah. Uh, there's this guy who plays for Stanford. He's like a third baseman shortstop. He hits for a pretty good average. Uh, his name is Kenny Kroger, spelled D-I-E. K R O G E R. Um, he he looks like he has range. He's got the makeup that the Yankees look for. But of course, the Yankees draft differently than any team in the major leagues. Their scouts, the way they do things, they don't really explain why they draft the guys that they draft. But it always seems to work out for them in the end. Cool. Anything else about the Yankees? Um, I just really hope that this is Mari if this is not Mariano Rivera's last year. Um, he's hinted on retirement, and uh, uh, he's an all-time great and one of my favorite players to watch. Um, he, he will he will be missed. What about the Red Sox? Oh Jesus, the Red Sox! <sighs> the Red Sox. Um, they have perhaps the most dangerous lineup in baseball. Uh, centered around Kevin Euclid, Carl Crawford, Dustin Pedroia, Adrian Gonzalez, Jacoby Ellsbury. Uh, the issue with them is depth. Behind those guys, they have Jared Saltalamacchia, who's not that great of a catcher. He's not even going to play most of the season there, I don't think, uh, given that they signed that um, that catcher from uh, what you, is it on Tampa Bay. Um, and then, of course, at shortstop, they're probably going to be bringing in that Iglesias kid, Jose Iglesias, he's a very, very good defender. Uh, the only thing is he can't hit at all. Uh, so based on um, based on what I know about the Red Sox, um, they, they're going to have a very good season. They're going to be the best hitting team in baseball. But beyond their hitting, they beyond the top of their lineup, they're not dangerous at all. Uh, their bullpen without Papelbon is a lot less formidable. And beyond their big three in their rotation, um, Lester, Beckett, and Buckholtz, uh, they have a whole bunch of nobodies. So, uh, and in, in the division that's the best division in baseball, uh, they're going to have a hard fight with the Tampa Bay Rays to make the postseason. Cool. Well, speaking of the Rays. Uh, well, um, I think they're going to be a much better team than last year. They're going to probably challenge for first place with the Yankees. Uh, Longoria is going to be healthy the full year. Uh, Desmond Jennings is going to be playing in the majors for the full year. Matt Moore is going to be pitching in the majors for the full year. He's probably the best uh, pitching prospect in the game, uh, arguably the best prospect in the game. Um, and, and Upton's going to be in his contract year, so maybe he's going to uh, actually perform you know, to what everybody expects him to perform to. He used to be a top prospect and all. Mm -hmm. I do expect them to finish second as a Yankee fan, but they could very well challenge the Yankees for first place. Cool. And the Blue Jays? Ah, the Blue Jays are a very young team. Um, they're being led by probably the best hitter in the major leagues, Jose Bautista. Um, but they have so much youth on that team. I don't really see them uh, competing for the postseason this year. In one or two years, though, they should be they should be a monster team. They're definitely going to be challenging for first place. Uh, they just need you know uh, Brandon Morrow to break through. They need Ricky Romero to to live up to his full potential. He started doing that yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last year. Um, and and they have a few young guys like Colby Rasmus in the lineup who could break through eventually. And and, and uh, uh, Brett Lowry too. I was very I'm very intrigued to see what he can do this year. He's an average hitter, hits for a high batting average, little bit of power, top prospect 
you know, they'll be a very interesting team to watch over the next few years. Cool. And last but not least, the Orioles. The Orioles, with there's no doubts in my mind, they're probably going to finish last in the division. Um, they do have a lot of young talent, uh, probably one of the best catchers in the major leagues in Matt Waiters, who I only expect to get better. Um, I think Brian Roberts is going to be out for a good amount of time again. Uh, but they actually have a legitimate shortstop, which they've been looking for for a while now, and J.J. Hardy. Um, Nick Markakis looks like he's going to have another solid year. Adam Jones will probably take the next step forward. Uh, the biggest change on this uh, team for me is their GM, I believe it was their GM, completely reassigned their scouting department. Um, and this could do two things. This could either... Uh, just ruin the team at the major league level for the next few years because you know they won't have advanced scouting or it could perhaps give the Orioles the best minor league system in all of baseball and have them develop talent unlike any other system uh, they have Manny Machado a shortstop coming up through their system he's very you know powerful bat uh, he's probably going to grow into his body a bit more over the next few years and he'll probably move over to third base, um, but he's going to be a superstar. And they drafted this uh, uh, pitcher, uh, I believe, right out of high school, uh, Dylan Bundy. He is one of the top five pitching prospects in all of baseball, and he's not even in Double A yet. So he should put on a show in Baltimore in a few years. Uh, but once again, this year is not going to be their year. Uh, hopefully this year they can develop talent uh, in, in in hopes of moving forward over the next two or three years. Cool. So what book are you reading right now? Oh, Moneyball. I'm, I'm halfway through Moneyball. So as a statistician and a sabermetrician, uh, that's a definite must. I have to finish that. And I uh, got it on book and tape, so I should be finishing it over the next week. Cool. And are there any stats we should know about right now? Um, one of the most important statistics to look at, uh, you can't really look at it now because it's the beginning of the season and you know it's small sample size. Most of these statistics don't really mean anything at the start of the year. Uh, but by the end of the year, uh, in my opinion, the best offensive statistic out there is weighted on base average. Uh, it takes every single uh, uh, play that, that gets a, a runner on base, whether it be a walk, a single, a double, triple, home run and it assigns an aggregate value to it based on the probability of the player scoring a run so it's probably the most accurate uh, offensive statistic out there uh, I'd pay attention to that especially if you're gonna look for how good players are gonna perform this year uh, I would look at last year's weighted on base average WOBA you can find that on fangraphs.com uh, which is the main sabermetrician site that I use it as tons of advanced statistics um, I haven't signed up for Bill James page yet but uh, I will soon um, just trying to further my knowledge you know cool. to understand everything that goes on in this game cool anyway um, I'm James Scott uh, this is my uncle uh, Jeff <laughs> and this is the baseball show have a nice day <laughs>